We are asking you guys to engage in an open design challenge. But what we feel is really important for students is that their open design challenge be very grounded in engineering knowledge as well as science so that they're designing and making with a purpose and it's not just a free for all, right? And so we chunk this Mission Makers program out to slowly scaffold knowledge and we also talked with some of you guys during the making process, there's a lot of other wonderful NASA programs like even our Art and the Cosmic Connection program that can help to layer and build knowledge. So the next activity we're going to is our game show. And this is still a work in progress, but we wanted to give you an introduction and kind of model this strategy for using interactive kind of gaming based activities to build knowledge in a fun way on topics that can sometimes be technical or intimidating or even dry, right? So what the game show is, is it's essentially a lecture. It's a, a PowerPoint presentation lecture but we've shifted it and recrafted it so it's done in a game show format where it has a question and answer typed script, which I'm using because we just finalized it and I don't have it memorized, but you could print this out, ask questions of your students and draw them into the conversation using their critical minds to think about science questions and engineering solutions and what things are gonna be most appropriate for which type of missions. Um, so we're going to go through a few, for a few of the slides, and I think the final will be posted on the archive site. The archive site. And eventually, um, at, right with as same with our, um, Art and Cosmic Connection. Eventually, we had a platform. Everything was delivered. We ended up expanding the things um, from when we had brought them to you back in 2012 um, a great deal. And similarly, we'll do the same thing here. Um, I would say one more thing is that when again our object today ultimately teams will be building developing a mission. They'll have a science question about something in the solar system they want to answer, and they're going to start coming up with, you're going to start coming up with ways to, to answer that. And part of, to be able to do that, you want to have some exposure to the broad ways that NASA is able to perceive things remotely, to understand, to get there, but also to understand what they get there, you know. And we don't, and it, one of the things that's frustrating is just with that adorable, um, we had a team here that came up with a new, um, what, how did you call it? A, Carlos. Yes, and they came up with a new instrument called the Carlos, and here it is, is the Carlos. I'm not going to go into what it stood for, but you all know how insane the acronyms are in NASA for all these things. And nobody just says spectrometer, it has to be a fancy name for spectrometer. So with that in mind, what we want to do is back off of the more sophisticated content and get to a, a more top level, what are the ways that you can perceive, and what are those general, and this is a way to introduce students of all age to that that's a lot more fun because you know if you read that in a textbook or somebody if I stood up here and told you about that, no one would care, all right? So each table is going to be a team um, and it's gonna be very informal. We'll see that there's sort of points up here um, and we're just gonna spend the next you know, six or seven minutes with a little exposure to our game show and then you can give us some feedback and your ideas because I know you'll have all kinds of wonderful thoughts. So do you wanna start? Sure, all right. okay, so. Where's the button to go okay, forward? I'll, how about if I do this? Okay. okay. So the first thing we did is we thought a lot about engineering, and Tyler and I have taught you know, engineering through maker-based stuff for a while now, and it's really complex, and kid, kids can get really intimidated, so we wanted to figure out a way, a theme, a storyline that we could use, and missions are essentially robotic extensions of us. They're robotic explorers. And so what we like to do is really personalize these missions and compare engineering systems to human systems. What do we use as humans to do our jobs and explore and make analogies to engineering systems? So the game show is broken up into categories. And these are think and act, communicate, energize, move, observe, touch, and protect. And we find breaking it down and Anthropomorphizing engineering actually really connects to learners of all ages. So our first category, um, this is our New Horizons mission. And I have these notes, which you can easily use in class to ask probing questions. We're gonna use the honor system for you guys to keep track of your points. 
Okay. If you're in the classroom, I would suggest a, a grid on the board, break groups up into teams and keep track of points. Maybe they can come up with team color or names. So you guys think about the question, talk about it at your table as a team and raise your hand when you think you got an answer. Hello, my name is New Horizons and I am going to a very special world beyond the orbit of Neptune. I was once considered a planet, but I'm now categorized as a dwarf planet. What world am I visiting? Ooh, 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 hands, I think you guys are first. Pluto, for the second point. Dawn was an orbiter mission. Curiosity was a lander mission. What kind of mission am I as New Horizons? Flyby, Fly yes. Okay, <laughs> keep track of your points, guys. Maybe winners get to take models home. That was Tyler's recommendation. <laughs> Yeah, I want the big one. Okay, this is gonna get a little tougher, so especially as you have older students. During the mission, we only knew of one moon, Sharon. How many moons have been discovered since? Yes. That's right. Four have been discovered since so a total since of five. Since so total of yep. five. Yep. Bonus point, can you name them? <laughs> I'll take one. Okay, Nick. Next. Do we have another name? Nix. That's, yep. Hydra. Hydra, yep. Okay, awesome. So you, we'll, we'll give some bonus points in the room. Okay, so just like humans need to think to perform their job, missions need to think, right? So, hello, this is Kepler. And Kepler has a really cool mission. It's in orbit around Earth. And it is looking for, it's looking at stars and their light and how it dims to discover exoplanets. What are they? Planets. What's an exoplanet? In the back. Uh, planets beyond Earth's solar system. Exactly. Planets beyond Earth's solar system. And Kepler has a brain, okay, to help it think and communicate what kind of instrument functions as a brain. In the turquoise shirt, yes? A computer. A computer. Excellent. Give yourself a point. <laughs> okay, energize. Humans, we need food. We need something to power our bodies. Well, missions need something to energize them as well. Okay, so this is Juno, currently on its way to Jupiter. See, and this is what happens in our classes too, okay? Before you even get the question out, you're like, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so recommendation, sometimes we have them write them down on paper or a chalkboard, and then they have to raise their hand to give their answers. There's also even little integrated bell systems that you can use with buzzards. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Juno. So what is Juno's job? What is it planning on studying? Yes. And what about Jupiter? Sherry, Sherry talked about it. Oh, it's still on me. Yeah. No, I was going to let the yeah, yeah. right yeah. Okay, um, the solid part of it, the, like the surface of it, going to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Another it, word, composition. The composition. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, what, look at this picture. What is Juno using to energize itself? Solar. Really. Solar. But how is that working 5 AU from our sun? What'd they do special to those solar panels? Coated with the blood stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting solution. Did they do something to make it more absorbent? They've actually, yes. We're looking for a different answer, though. You know, and I think what's here, the other thing is sometimes, I mean, they, they're very large, okay? They're all, there's three of them. Usually there's a pair. Um, or a They're 66 feet each. Right? Wow. And in addition, um, they, are, they are now able to make them out of materials that absorb more effectively and efficiently. So this is the first spacecraft whose primary source of fuel is, um, is the solar. But that's excellent. As we're going to the Open Design Challenge, students, learners like yourself might have these cool new solutions where how could we extend the capability of solar power, right, on missions? Okay, where are we at? Oh, back to New Horizons. So, New Horizons, traveling to Pluto, 
If we used normal fuel systems, it would take 30 years to get there, okay? So what is New Horizons using to energize itself to cut down on that? Yes, sir. Iron drive. New <laughs> Nuclear? It does use RTGs and it uses, I'll give you a hint, it uses the help of other worlds. Through what? There's, there's Gravity assist. Gravity assist. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, well, you answered the other question too, the RTGs, um, the nuclear radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Okay. So who, there you are, put that hand in the air. <laughs> So we're at the Dawn mission. Okay, so we're at the Dawn mission, and I think we've already talked about what it's using with its blue light. But it also has two other energy sources in conjunction with that. So it has its ion propulsion system. But what else do you kind of see up there? Solar panels, yeah. And then this one I didn't know until this morning. It also has a fuel that it's using. Is it for? Is it for? Thruster maneuvering it has or? Two, it has two fuels. It has xenon, which is the fuel that is um, the primary the driver for the ion propulsion. And then it has hydrazine <coughs> for thrusters and some other. They're using that. That's what they, uh, what they um, are utilizing to help it be more flexible and come up with solutions for the reaction. Level. So we're. Louder. Oh, okay. I'm going to be louder. Yeah. Right. I'm pretty loud. So let's go to the, let's go to the next one. Oh, okay. As humans, we need to communicate. We speak and we also hear. And I think there's a lot of connections you can make between engineering systems and human sensory systems. Okay, so this is the Deep Space Network. And who can tell us what they're using here to hear communication from satellites and spacecraft? Yes, sir? Radio telescopes, right. And bonus point, where are the antenna of the deep space network? Oh my gosh, you guys are rocking it. Okay, in the back. Very nice. Yeah, you got them all. Canberra. Three points. <laughs> Woo! Well, you, you Osiris Rex guys might have a little advantage, but what does the spacecraft have on it so it can hear Earth and then talk back to the Earth? What did we put on that OSIRIS-REx model? Yes, sir. High gain antenna. And often they have low gain antenna as well. Okay. You ready to go to C? This is my favorite category as a planetary artist. But spacecraft are like superhumans because they can see in all different types of energy and forces that our human eyes cannot see in. So here we have Dawn, the wonderful spacecraft that was at Vesta and now as of yesterday went into orbit around Ceres. And it took this picture with a framing camera. And what do you think that this gorgeous image is showing? I think we haven't called on that table, yes. It is showing a crater. And what do you think some of the different color and values might mean in that image? Mineral. Mineral composition. And I've had a lot of students use this image for our Art and the Cosmic Connection. That's a semicircle, and craters are normally circles. What's happened to that crater, do you think? Erosion. It looks kind of like a landslide might have filled in that crater form. I know I'm going off script, Whitney. Sorry. Up okay. We're ready for the so that's that's yeah. it. Yep. Okay. So that kind of gives you a feel for how how a a game show can be a really effective, engaging way to take technical topics or a lecture format and get get kids really engaged in the conversation, as well as using their inference and, and critical thinking skills to come up with answers for things, to build knowledge, to get to more engineering design challenges. And kind of as a big collective, get a broader awareness of what's possible. I think it's more that than this concrete vocabulary. If you want to learn what a spectrometer means, wonderful. But that's not 
the objective in most of our classes, sometimes in high school, but not in others. It's more, it's understanding things like that light, um, there, there's a whole way of, of measuring a variety of characteristics besides that.